Earlier this year, Mark Wahlberg's passion project, Father Stew, a redemptive tale of a roustabout who finds God and ends up saving his family in the process. It made a huge splash at the box office. Well, now in an unorthodox move, Sony is bringing the movie back to theaters at the top of December in a new form. They call it Father Stew Reborn. Joining me to discuss is the film star and producer, Mark Wahlberg. Mark, thanks for being with us, for taking a little time from your Thanksgiving Eve. Now, this is an odd move, Mark, to release a movie in the same year it was originally released. Why did you in the studio decide to do it this way? Well, given the nature of the, the R-rated movie, uh, lots of families didn't feel comfortable uh, with their children seeing it, but they really wanted them to get the message. So um, because the Archbishop, uh, Archbishop Thomas of Nevada, who had actually ordained Father Stu uh, in Helena, Montana, came to me and said, Mark, I really understand why the language is there, but it would be a sin and a shame for young people not to see this movie and to really understand the importance of this story. Mm. So. We wanted to make sure that we could share that with children of all ages, and so we recut the film. We took out all 200 and some odd swears, <laughs> and the film is st still as powerful and as impactful. Uh, but to see Stu's journey and the struggle uh, that he went through to find his calling, uh, we felt was really important for people of all ages to see. Well, well that's what I was going to ask you. Rosalind Ross, who was your director here, she told me she, she cut out about 200 expletives. It took her a couple of weeks. Uh, it, is it now like a 20-minute movie? Is this double time, Stu? Mark, what do you lose in the process or it's gain? You really didn't lose anything. I think especially for young people, they will definitely be impacted by, uh, especially by Stu's conviction and seeing mm -hmm. the, the story and the struggle and how he handled uh, adversity and, and struggling and suffering the way that he did and really embraced it uh, and found his calling to serve God. But I remember seeing hard times in the theater with my dad when I was seven or eight mm -hmm. years old, had a profound effect, impact on me. And it didn't have any bad language. It did have bare knuckle boxing. Mm -hmm. But I think then it will allow children to then go and see the movie in the way that it was originally intended uh, when they get a little bit older and it's more age appropriate for them. Hmm. Why do you think it's important for kids and families, particularly boys, to see this movie now, Mark? I know that was a goal for you, that, that young boys should see this with their dads. <sighs> Yeah, I really wanted young people uh, as a whole to see it, but especially young boys, because I think it really, you really kind of hopefully can avoid making a lot of the mistakes that Stu made and going mm -hmm. through a lot of the struggles that he did. Uh, I think, you know, it's, it's a brutally honest depiction of somebody who's struggling, trying to find their own way, trying to find their calling, and kind of going through the hardships, especially living life um, and expressing anger in a way that is not really productive. I think Stu, mm -hmm. uh, if he had a chance, like all of us, to go back and do it differently we would, but we want to prevent kids from making a lot of the same mistakes that we made, or certainly mistakes that I made. So anything yeah. that we can do to kind of show them an easier path to uh, to serving God and just being positive, productive members of society and the community, especially in the church, and, and, and gravitating towards their faith, whether that's Catholicism or Judaism or, or Islam or, or Buddhism or, or any other form mm. of faith. Mark, Father Stuart Long was an actual person. This is based on a real life story, uh, one that I hadn't heard before you showed me this film the first time. You said this is one of the most important movies of your career. Why? I mean, I know you obviously put your money where your mouth is. You funded it yourself. Yeah, but I, you know, I, I've always gravitated towards the true stories, and I've I've made quite a few of them, and I feel like they've always had the most impact on on people and audiences. But this film, especially, has touched so many people, and it's reminded them about what life is really all about. And we all deal with hardships, we all deal with loss, uh, and and the inevitable. But how you cope with those things, and how we're treating and interacting with one another, and especially in this day and age when there's so much divide, this is a movie that really brings people together. Yep. And we want to love and support people. We want people to know that they're not forgotten we've all made mistakes and that nobody is beyond redemption and yeah. again we want to spread a lot more love and a lot more acceptance well mark what i love about it is you have a family that shattered at the beginning and the the, the story really is no family is ever irredeemable no peace can't be put back together and sometimes on the far side of suffering that's where you find redemption and that's a hard path but it's a true path now mark you have a new focus it seems to me not only on family and in, in the film project you're embracing, but your, your own family. You decided to move to Nevada recently to give them a fresh start. Why? What was happening in L.A.? 
Uh, well, we had one child who was, you know, um, kind of being, uh, I would, she's she's on, in an amazing place now, so I don't want to put her or her business out there, but, yeah. you know, it was a challenge. It was a challenge growing up uh, with a celebrity name. It's a challenge growing up mm -hmm. under the spotlight, and we just wanted to give our chance, uh, kids the best chance to be successful, and they've been thriving in a new environment. Um, you know, yeah. there's a lot of pressure being attached to, to me and, and, and that sort of thing. I just wanted them to have their own space in their own place yeah. and they've been doing amazing right. um, you know it is possible to raise uh, healthy happy children anywhere and it's also uh, no real safe place to avoid drugs and peer pressure and all of those things that come yeah. along with being a young impressionable child yeah. but I think in this particular safe environment it was the best thing for my children mm -hmm. and uh, and hopefully I can also do lots of great things uh, as far as creating jobs and opportunity there as well so there was just so many pros to to moving there and giving us all a fresh start. Yeah, well, I love that. And your wife, I know, stays close to them when you're working. And that, too, is such an important mm -hmm. foundation in the family. I mean, it's 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 great. So, like Angela Lansbury, she, she pulls she her is, children. She, she is the anchor. Yeah, my, my wife is the anchor. She is the foundation. She is the glue. She is the reason why my kids are thriving. I Yeah, I really have to. And I don't give her enough credit as often as it's deserved. But uh, she, is, she is the one who gets all the credit and well, it's well-deserved. I have the same story, pal. My Rebecca is, does the same thing at home. What are you most thankful for this Thanksgiving, Angels. Mark, before I let you go? Oh, you know, uh, Thanksgiving obviously is my, my favorite holiday. I'm just grateful um, that I have my health, that I, uh, I'm so blessed and so fortunate, and, you know, that now my, my focus has, has, has shifted mm -hmm. to things that are going to hopefully make a more positive impact on people and help people mm -hmm. and bring people together. Um, you know, that I was able to make my parents proud before they passed. I have so many reasons to be grateful. I really do. I, I wear out the, you know, the cloth on my, on my pajamas every morning uh, expressing my gratitude, you know, uh, and I will continue to do that. And, and hopefully that will rub off on my children and other people that I'm around and that I continue mm -hmm. to express that and that I have to do that uh, on a daily basis. Well, we're thankful to you. Uh, you brought a great uh, beacon of hope, I think, for a lot of people through this film this year. Um, and I, before I, I sign off, there are reports I read that you're being approached to join the Marvel Universe. Are you getting fitted for your spandex before I let you go <laughs> no there is no truth to that uh, I've never been approached to ask and I don't know if I would ever have the cards to walk out of my trailer in one of those costumes <laughs> but that being said I am focusing on and I'm looking forward to working with you and other folks in the faith-based space and creating other opportunities to tell wonderful stories that will bring people closer together all right and bring that, people closer to God that's a great goal in the new year I'll leave it there happy Thanksgiving to you and your family and I want to encourage everybody uh, Father Stu Reborn hits theaters everywhere December 9th it's worth seeing and bring your family with you happy Thanksgiving Mark to you and all the Wahlbergs God bless you thank you likewise hey Sean Hannity here hey click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis you will not get it anywhere else.